welcome back to Identiverse 2024. We are streaming all of these interviews live from Las Vegas. Uh, very excited to be here to learn about the topic and the leaders of identity. And with me, I have a leader with us uh, who is uh, Tim Prendergast, CEO of Strong DM. How are you doing, Tim? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Doing great. I'm always excited to learn from my uh, leaders in the identity space. It's a blessing to be here at Identiverse and also speak to you. I wanted to you know, start it off with you know, learning more about you. We, right before we hit record on this session, you were saying, hey, you know, my company, Strong DM, I'm not one of the co-founders, I'm the CEO, I'm you know, helping take this to the next level. Yeah. What was your introduction to Strong DM and what do you all do? Oh, well, in the world, it's often who you know and how you meet them, right? Yeah. So I met the founders of Strong DM in, as a sister portfolio company to my startup that was called Evident IO. Uh, they were both True Ventures companies. Shout out to True Ventures, great investment firm. Um, and they build strong founder relationships. So I got to meet the founders of Strong DM and support them on their journey. And when my journey ended and I was ready to do something new, yeah. they were very gracious in inviting me in and letting me kind of help them take this to the next level. And I think that's been a fantastic experience and I couldn't have asked for better people to work with. That is amazing. I love stories like that because you never know who you're going to meet, especially putting the work in. I've, you know, I used to work at Palo Alto Network, so I know yeah. about Evident. Yeah. I know that the uh, community, the cybersecurity community, technology community really invested in that. Yep. But it sounds like, you know, you have a group of people that are investing in you. Yeah. So, you know, let's talk a little bit about Strong DM. Like, uh, who are you all serving? Where are the, you know, the roles and titles that you all typically cater to? Yeah, so Strong DM is a zero trust PAM. So we're actually targeting identity professionals and security professionals, helping them remove the risk of credentials from end user interactions in privileged ways, and helping them also get better visibility into how people use the infrastructure that powers their business. Love that. Short, sweet, concise, easy to understand. Let's take a look at uh, access management. I'm sure that that's one of your key areas of focus. And yep. also, like you just said, zero trust. What is the current state of access management and zero trust? I think access management in the industry has kind of been often overlooked by probably far sexier topics like <laughs> AI and ML this. But really, access management is one of the core foundations of a good security program. How people work with the resources you provide for them to build better outcomes for your customers is really critical for security professionals because giving privilege to users means good things can happen, but bad things can happen also. Credentials can be stolen, as we yep. learned in the Verizon DBIR report this year, as the primary source of breaches, right? And so being able to know who should get access to what and what they should be able to do with that access is really critical. But extending on that, Sometimes I give you a house key to come over and water plants in my house. I don't expect you to go drink all the beer in the fridge and smash my <laughs> TV, right? I just want you to water the plants. But right. access historically has been once you've got access, you've got wide open access and there's no further control. And Strong DM's actually taken a lot of actions to help protect what privileges you can do and control it once you give them that house key. When I look at concepts like zero trust and access management, I often think, you know, coming in from an outsider to an organization, being a new person, who should have access? You know, how do you help your organizations and customers understand, like, you know, how to think about zero trust, especially if they yeah. aren't necessarily too familiar with the culture and the history of the company? Well, I think first you set the ground rules and the ground rules of the world we live in is everyone is increasingly technical in their job. Yeah. Whether you're in marketing, whether you're in sales, whether you're yep. an engineer writing code, you're using technology to do your job and AI is only going to drive that to accelerate. So you need to think long and hard about how I provision and provide access to people to do their job, but don't give them too much so that they could get in trouble with it, right? Mm -hmm. um, if you've not gone on zero trust journeys at all, it all starts with an identity provider, which is why we're all here at Identiverse. <laughs> uh, so you know who's working at your organization or what identities are active, and then you move down the chain of how do I authenticate them, how do I authorize them, and then how do I control them once they're authorized so I can either revoke or challenge that authorization at any point in time should the environmental conditions around us change. You go out to the beach, you bring an umbrella, you bring a towel, but it might rain, so you probably bring some extra protections for that. It's the same thing in security. You have to plan for all eventualities because they're bound to happen. Yeah, they are bound to happen. It's unfortunate, but I think you know being prepared is important. Having strong partners like Strong DM is uh, critical. And you know when you look at um, the current state of uh, identity and access management and being here at Identiverse, what are you hoping to 
uh, get out of this uh, event? And also, what kind of influence are you hoping to leave behind? So I think the influence we want to leave behind is obvious. We want to show people there's a better way to approach the topic of PAM, and there's a new category coming that will replace legacy PAM, right? It extends all the way to can you control the actions people are doing once they're authenticated and once they're authorized, and can you measure and report on that for compliance reasons and security reasons, right? Right. And that influence is already resonating on the floor. We've had a ton of great conversations, and customers are looking at it and saying, hey, you opened my eyes that PAM is much more than just authentication or vaulting a credential. And it's true, the industry's moved past it because technology is accelerating. We have three kinds, four kinds, five kinds of clouds. We have multiple kinds of Kubernetes yeah. environments. Like it's just crazy how far we've come in 10 years. And I think the next 10 years will accelerate at twice the clip we've seen, which means having a flexible platform that solves these problems in a really ingenious way is foundational to having a successful security program as we go forward. When I've spent time being an architect at financial institutions, uh, I've had my, my mind blown because I, I hear about all of these different technologies that have been adopted you know, the importance of them staying running because it's servicing yeah. customers. And just the complexity of environments has really changed, has grown, it's hard to manage. Yeah. You know, how do you help people think about uh, cloud environments, the, the next generation of environments, ephemeral environments, to break it down into smaller chunks that are manageable? Look, I think the cloud providers did a great job giving you programmatic identity, meaning you can actuate the APIs and create tokens and, and stand up identities and API keys and then tear them down. But a lot of people don't get that far. A lot of people are still embracing the cloud journey and starting out and adopting those concepts. Yeah. And so they're bringing some of the legacy concepts with them into those environments. So the first thing is to help them expand their horizons to understand there's different ways to approach it. And sometimes there's a way to unify both strategies together in something new overall. So mm -hmm. you kind of clean up the legacy mess, you can embrace the new fun stuff that you get in the cloud and you can have a more successful outcome in the long run. But at the same time, the ephemerality is technically new. Like one day you wake up, you have 500 servers in your data center, and the next yeah. day you wake up and there's two, like you've been robbed. But in the cloud, that's a normal <laughs> eventuality by the minute, every minute for most organizations. So having a platform that can actually flex and scale with those elastic events, those ephemeral systems, gives people the ability to access things just in time when they need it and when they exist, and then contain and, man uh, sorry, contain and maintain the audit trail for something that may have only been in existence for a minute and used, right. right? Sometimes those security events disappear because we can't offload the logs fast enough, but because of the position uh, Zero Trust PAM has in the market, you can actually capture live in flight the protocols and the sessions mm -hmm. as they're happening, record them, and keep that evidence that something did exist and something was done, even though it happened almost in a second. So that's a lot of information, especially yeah. looking at things like containers. We're spinning up, spinning yeah. down containers all the time. Uh, how do you all make sense of all that information that's being shared with you know, your solution? It's the power of big data. I, I love when we come back to topics that are old and new again. It really yeah. is a computer science problem. How do I slice, dice, and analyze large data sets and then take a real-time approach to reporting on them, right? So it comes down to statistical analysis. Mm -hmm. You have to do some kind of bucketing of risk scoring. Then you bubble up the really key events to people to look at, and the rest of the stuff you kind of categorize as these are interesting but maybe not human relevant or immediately necessary to review, and you scale that approach up. We process billions of events a month, uh, actually billions of sessions a month, there's tons more events, but that gives us a head start on everyone else from a SaaS platform state to understand and contemplate what happens in big data sets, what happens across segments of customers and segments of privileged users, and then drive those insights back to other customers to help them improve their operations. I can tell you what I would do if I was in your situation. I would copy all that data, try to paste it into ChatGPT. <laughs> Tell me, make sense out of it all, but I, I know that you're not doing that. You have you know, experts behind the, your solutions and yeah. behind what you're building. But are you using you know, AI to help make sense of this data now that it's uh, available for you? So we have a strong data privacy agreement with our customers, so we don't import any of our data into ChatGPT, but we do work on using models to analyze uh, non, -identifiable, non identifiable information and platform information to help us drive better operations and better outcomes for our customers. Uh, I also personally use ChatGPT to keep LinkedIn and very entertaining, so <laughs> it's a small plug for following me on LinkedIn if you want to see some yeah. cool images. But uh, the AI tools are going to get better and better, and they're going to understand more things. And I talked about that middle layer of maybe not human relevant data sets and information. Those are going to be things that are highly probable that AI will analyze and give you summaries on and help humans and maybe find signal in that noise because no one can go watch millions of container interactions as they're coming right. up and down over time. And we're going to need to leverage technology to really drive some sense out of all that data that otherwise would be thrown away or considered noise. One uh, aspect that I've been hearing over and over again uh, at Identiverse so far is the attacker, the adversary is starting to use AI. And yep. they're going to start using AI to generate more events, to generate more sessions. 
Um, so what are your thoughts on you know, protecting against the threat of uh, adversaries using AI? Look, I think it, it's funny that you see stories about people using uh, fake avatars to defraud companies. It comes back to the same principles Identiverse was founded on. You have to authenticate somebody. You have to authorize what you're willing to let them do, including if they're asking you to transfer money or do something else, right? And you have to strongly validate. So very much zero trusty principles. <laughs> Don't trust your eyes. Right. Trust the data you can gather on a situation and then make the best decision possible based on that, right? So challenge everything. Don't believe everything. Uh, it's probably the same guidance you give a child going on the internet for the first time. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's increasingly relevant for the world we live in. And I think AI is going to make script kitties hot again. And if you remember the old days, oh the kids yeah. that could just run scripts to attack yes. websites. It's the new script kitty. You can go say, hey, ChatGPT, come up with an exploit for this thing, and it'll help you do that. And really, we have to come up with some unique ways to prevent that from happening. And it always starts with access. If you can keep them out of systems and they can't mm -hmm. even see the systems, they can't gain privilege on the systems, then you don't have anything really to worry about. You have the human element to always worry about. But hopefully we get good at asking questions and we use pineapple as a secret keyword. Don't use that. Uh, <laughs> but something to help us authenticate each other admin. live on Zoom when we see each other, yeah. Admin, 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 yes. Exactly. Kicking it old school. So when you, uh, you know, looking at Identiverse and having an opportunity to really influence the future like we were speaking about, uh, what are you hoping to see out of identity in this next wave of solutions, opportunities, and, and you know, overcoming the challenges? Yeah, look, I think identity is the center basis of the next generation of security for everything. And we're going to use it as the core foundation with a lot of rich context we draw from peer and partner products, other security technologies, and other things we can gather from the signal and brand of your mobile phone and the chip inside of it, to your biometrics, to as silly as it sounds, MFA and TOTP, which everyone yeah. will, will groan at, but <laughs> getting as much data as we can to build the best picture we can about you and the actions you want to take and the historical and predicted actions you'll take and use that to judge whether or not we permit something, that's really the future identity is going to be going to. And I think ultimately, for us, it's a convergence of a lot of the technologies you'll see here. So everyone's going to get smarter about how we do multiple things because we're all trying to solve problems that appear in our everyday lives. We've had right. enough of our healthcare information being leaked. We've had enough of our PII being leaked. And really, the better solutions we make, the more we stop those kinds of uh, attacks from happening and the more that we get better consumer and commercial products for our day-to-day -day lives. So there may be someone tuned into the stream that wants to get one step better at this world of identity and access management, yep. especially the access management part. Yep. Uh, for anyone that you know, is trying to you know, clean up their hygiene a bit, uh, what would be your one piece of advice for them to be one step stronger and better at Look, access management? I, th I think the answer comes back to John Kinderbog nailed it. 12, 13 years ago with zero trust. Now the question is, how do you operationalize it? What does your unique journey for your organization look like? Mm. It starts with getting an identity provider. I think we're all there 10 years into this. Yeah. Now the next question is, how do I leverage identity into who can do what in my organization? And that's where companies like StrongDM and a lot of other people you're going to see on the floor can really help you. And I think we're all here to not only guide you on their journey and show you good examples of other organizations that have done it, the thought leaders, but also help you do it with technology so you don't feel like you're going it alone, having to build it all yourself or deal with legacy solutions to do it. You can get something modern that meets your modern stack where it lives and meets your users in a place where they can use it, they can love it. They don't feel like you're making them do the seven labors of Hercules just to do their job. Yeah. You know, I would strongly recommend everyone to check out uh, Strong DM. If you want to learn more, be sure to check out Security Weekly dot com forward slash strong dm that's s-t-r-o-n-g d-m i-d-v be sure to check them out and also stay up to date with tim yep. tim i appreciate you spending a few minutes with us letting us ask you about your company and you know your role in the space of identity and with that we will see everyone very soon awesome thank you